weekend. Good. Game number five has the Virginia Tech Hokies traveling to Nebraska to take on the undefeated 3-0 Nebraska Cornhuskers. Both teams are unranked. This is a national spotlight game kicking off at 7 o'clock Saturday night. Coach, how do you see this one faring? Well, this one's tough, and having not seen Nebraska on TV at all, it's, it's really hard for me to call this one. Uh, it, really the first big test for the Huskers to see uh, what kind of strides they're making there. They have Marlon Lucky, who's the uh, fourth all-time leading rusher at Nebraska, which that, that's a heck of an accomplishment. And they also have a red zone defense um, that is 13th in the nation, I believe. Uh, all 43 points that they've given up have come from inside the 40, meaning to me, no big plays. And, and that's a big thing when you make the other team earn everything that they get. So as far as that goes, you really have to take a good look at Nebraska. Virginia Tech's a battle-tested team. They have two tough gut-out wins against uh, Georgia Tech, who I like a lot, and North Carolina. Uh, a tough one to call. I'm, I'm going to say the Hokie D may be too tough for Nebraska at Lincoln, but it's going to be a heck of a game. Fair call. It's an even-up match, in my opinion. One thing Bo Pelini has done is restore the fan base that was extremely splintered over the last four years over the hiring of Bill Callahan. Uh, having an opportunity to go out to the USC game last year, you could see that the fan base in that state was very torn, pro Solich people versus the pro Callahan people. Pelini has reunited the fan base. And in a state like Nebraska, where football is so uh, revered, the fans live and die for what the Cornhuskers do every Saturday, it's an important thing. The other thing I think has happened at Nebraska is they're playing with some passion on the field. Last year's black shirt defense, known as the black skirts, last year were hideous, absolutely horrendous, gave up points left and right. Interesting because Saturday is going to be the first time this year Nebraska is going to be going up against a traditional two-back, two-tight end, two-receiver offense. They've seen spread offenses in the first three games, New Mexico State, San Jose State, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they come up and, and handle a traditional offense. That offense, by the way, for Virginia Tech is ranked 112th in the nation at the moment. They're not churning out a whole lot of yards. They're young in certain areas. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and pick the home team, Nebraska, to win and move to 4-0 for the first time with a quality win over an opponent in a while. This week's feature game of the week has the 10th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide led by coach Nick Saban at 4-0, traveling to Georgia's Sanford Stadium to play Mark Ricks, undefeated, third-ranked, 4-0 Georgia Bulldogs. Coach, before we get to our predictions, as always, we took our cameras out to our student body and staff to see what they had to say. Got to go with the Bulldogs in this one. They're playing at home. Nick Saban isn't living up to the promise that he said. All right, Crimson Tide's going down. I'd say 32-15. 32-15, go Bulldogs. So who do you think's going to win, uh, Alabama or Georgia? I have inside information from Mr. O'Brien that says Alabama's going to win. So I'm picking Alabama too, 21-17. Georgia, Alabama? Yeah. Uh, i got to believe the pollsters know something. Georgia's ranked pretty high for, for, for a reason. They're, they're going to win probably by single digits this time, though. I'm going to say Georgia by seven. I think Georgia's going to win. It's at Georgia, right? Yes. Then definitely Georgia over Alabama. I think it'll be a close game, but I think Georgia will come out on top. Georgia all the way. What's the score? 17 to 7. I think Georgia 25 14. Georgia! Georgia. Because it's at home. Because it's at home. Because it's at home. And it's against out. And they have one of the best running backs in the country. And they yeah. have the best running back in the one country. One of the best. One of the best. One. Is that What's good? The What's the score going to be? 28-7. 28-7. Alabama at Georgia. Between the hedges. Georgia and Alabama. Two SEC powerhouses. I, however, have the inside track. And it's going to be Georgia 13, Alabama 10. Count on it. Awesome SEC matchup this Saturday. Georgia fans are excited for the uh, first time in a long, long time. Arch rival Alabama coming to town. Students are calling for a blackout. Sanford Stadium's fired up. Ugga the whatever, 65th or whatever bulldog they got on the sideline. Going to be ready to go. How do you see this one going? 
this is, this is a really tough one to call. I, uh, you know, obviously don't really care for either team, seeing that they're rivals with my volunteers. Uh, however, you know, uh, Alabama has proved that, that they're back to playing physical defense or a physical football team that can run the football, uh, which allows that play-action passing game to get going. Would look real good against Clemson. And Coach, again, you know, eighth-ranked nationally scoring defense, 14th overall in total defense, and that's right up Saban's alley. He's always been a defensive guy. Right. For, for Alabama, if they can get Glenn Coffey rolling with, with the run game, and which opens up the play-action pass and sort of counters Georgia's speed on defense, uh, that would be key for them, and, and Alabama would be tough to beat if that happens. Um, however, you know, Georgia at home, breaking out the black jerseys this week, black out in the stadium, a lot of excitement. Nohan Marino ran wild last week, and that defense Georgia has looked awfully fast. Uh, I have to give the edge to Georgia at home in this one. It's going to be a great game. Actually interested in watching the game, even though, like I said, uh, being a Tennessee fan, it's kind of hard to, to root for either team. But I'm going to pick Georgia here and uh, can't stand Alabama a little bit more than, than Georgia. So I'm going with Georgia at home here. Last year, I believe the game was in Tuscaloosa, and it came down to an overtime win for Georgia. I see a very close game uh, at home. Georgia is tough. They play well at Sanford Stadium. The thing I like about Alabama is they're physical. Yeah. Both sides of the ball. Offensively, they're going to punch you in the mouth. Defensively, they, they're, they're tough. I think it's going to keep them in the game. But I do think in the end, no Sean Marino. And the Georgia offense is going to make a late drive, late field goal, do something in the end to win the game. I see Alabama's run coming to a close. They're a year or so away. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the next couple of years yes. of college football. Uh, but Saban, just, he's a great coach. Love him or hate him, the man knows what he's doing, and he knows how to run the clock for the most part. So anybody in West Virginia, buck up. You may be able to get Saban in the next couple of years. That's going to do it for this week's edition of SWTV's College Football Show. On behalf of Chris Molino and myself, producer Mike Steppe, have a great weekend.